Hey guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look at the beta version of Linux Mint 18 Mate Edition. Now that Ubuntu 16.04 is out, you can expect quite a lot of 16.04 based distributions to start um, working their way into the public uh, sphere right about now, and Linux Mint is no exception. So, because this is like a full release, it's it's gone from 17.3 to 18.0 to effectively, there are going to be a number of pretty sizable changes, not just under the hood, but also to the, the UI elements. So what Mint aimed to do back in the day, and, and I still, for all intents and purposes, assume that the aim is the same, is to give a traditional desktop paradigm that's as easy... Um, to get working out of the box as possible. Back in the day Linux Mint was particularly appealing in the first uh, couple of versions because you could uh, you didn't have to worry about the faff of installing codecs to get DVDs and whatnot to play. Now in version 18 it's probably worthwhile to point out that version 18 doesn't actually come with codecs installed on the disk although there is an option in the installer to install them as you go along. Uh, my assumption for this is because uh, in a, a number of countries um, including codecs in your distribution is um, against copyright law and some countries it isn't so if you want your distribution to be as popular and successful in, in as many countries as possible then sort of logic dictates that it would fit within as many countries laws as possible so that's why I assume now that Linux Mint is gaining real traction that they're deciding to 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 not include the codecs for risk of a lawsuit which I guess for all intents and purposes is sensible especially considering how easy the alternative is so what can we expect in 18 that we didn't get with Linux Mint 17.3 and 17.3 was a pretty highly acclaimed distribution so the competition is pretty stiff Okay, so this comes with Mate 1.14 with improved GTK support, uh, touchpad configuration improvements, uh, Python ex extensions in Kaja can now be managed separately, all three window focus modes are selectable. I don't fully know what that means. I think that's just when you you know hover over a window and it uh, gives it focus. Uh, the panel now has the ability to change icon sizes. Uh, the volume brightness OCD can now be enabled, disabled, updated, translations. Hmm. I suppose that's not massive in the way of upgrades. Uh, I can't. I think it's available to get Mint 1.14 on Ubuntu Mate as well. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced Mate as well. It's just uh, just an accident. Um, X apps. Uh, okay, so X apps. Are the, again, there's been a few people talking about X apps already. Basically, what X apps are doing is that they're taking uh, a number of apps. Uh, forking them and then making them backwards compatible, uh, making them sort of desktop agnostic or at least within the, the confines of GTK desktops, uh, give them HD, uh, HI high definition support basically, um, and, and that the, the sort of have a very traditional layout. And that makes a lot of sense because there still are a lot of Windows XP users coming over to Linux and familiar desktop paradigms are going to they're not necessarily going to be top of the list of, of things that they want and need, but they're certainly going to be, uh, they're going to make the transition from Windows to Linux easier, and you need to make that as easy as possible uh, for, for, you know, lest you scare people away. So, uh, yes, so they're very similar to what we might have seen before, as um, GTK3 desktop apps from you know from from Mate and from from XFCE start developing, we might we might see them fork off into very different looks but I gotta say you know is there really that much of a difference between the desktop app the X apps here and the 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 apps in Mate uh, that come you know or the 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 apps that come in XFCE well obviously not because they've obviously been directly forked from it <clears throat> but um but in the future uh, it may be the case it does certainly seem like they are doing a lot of work that might not necessarily bear the fruits that you expect but uh you know I'm always open to innovation so these are an example. You got um, Totem Player there. You got Photo Manager there. PDF Reader, Image Viewer, all pretty basic stuff. The Update Manager. Okay, so the Update Manager has seen some uh, interesting improvements. It now makes the 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 end user a little bit more familiar with the different levels and what they mean, and and you are sort of asked and encouraged to accept levels that you feel are suitable for your use case as well. So it's not so if you want to update the kernel, which you previously would discourage from doing, although you could still do that, it's now a lot easier. Uh, Linux Mint tend to refrain from updating the kernel because once you've got a working kernel, uh, they consider the likelihood of of any 
any security vulnerabilities to come out and cause you to be in any way vulnerable to be insignificant compared to the security risk that you take from upgrading a kernel because if you if you mess that up um, it can be very difficult, particularly for inexperienced users, to rectify that particular problem. So they definitely put stability right at the list of of, of priorities here. Whereas Ubuntu might put you know newer software slightly ahead because they have a six month release cycle. Whereas although Linux Mint does have a six month release cycle, the the sort of the incremental releases, the point one, point two, point three releases, they're only um, really they're only minor improvements the the bulk of what's under the hoods is going to be what is effectively this distribution you can install this distribution for a couple of years and still be really quite good still be quite safe you know it, it you can expect it to work another big uh, thing that they've come forward with is mint y this new set of themes which admittedly look quite good but you can they, they definitely seem to have some kind of teething troubles with uh, the implementation of this theme now this is still a beta version of mint so you know it's very important to give benefit of the doubt when possible but as you can see for example if i just minimize this uh, i've got some of the old x apps here out so this is this is the example of the uh, mint y theme um one of the things I'm not the biggest fan of, and this is flat themes in general, is that it's often very easy for the windows to kind of melt together a bit like this, which which breaks up the the vivid shapes. I tend to, you know, things that pop out tend to be a bit more easier for me to to see. But that aside, I'm not uh, a huge fuss pot on these kind of things. So this is an example of where the the Y the mint Y theme doesn't really sort of set up correctly. You've got dark icons on a dark background here. Uh, and then you've got dark icons on the light menu and then as you can see here in the taskbar you've got dark icons and I don't think uh, it is possible but I could be very very wrong um, to change to an appropriate icon theme that, that looks right uh, icons 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 so you've got yeah you've only got mint Y um, you could change I suppose you could change to a mint X theme Oh, you'd need to log out and log back in for the, the taskbar icons to work and I think you might need to mint x dark does that mint y okay so if you go with mint y then you should have you know you go with the older icon theme the icons are um Oh well, yeah. So basically, you might need to mess around with some of the icon themes to get uh, to get what looks good and get what you know get things working. This might just be because it's a beta. This might be because it's a new theme. Uh, they do include the Mint X theme uh, by default. They they the, the 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 theme that you boot up is Mint X, which is the one that they've been using for years without any you know bugs or problems with it. Uh, the Mint Y theme, yeah. Like I've I've noticed a few you know inconsistencies, uh, dark icons on dark backgrounds and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, could of course be sorted out, and there is oh they've got some artwork improvements as well, so that's always nice. Okay, and it comes of course with the Firefox browser, as you can see me browsing through here. So, what does that leave us with the desktop? This is the control panel for Mate. I've always liked to have the, uh, the I've always liked the Mate control panel. You've got the driver manager here, so if you've got Nvidia drivers or you've got anything that requires pr proprietary drivers, you can install them really easily here. You've got Synaptic package manager. So if you're if you if you just want to get to the bare bones of an installer and not have to go to the command line, that's very useful too. So this is um, this is the Notepad. Um, if I shut this open and reopen it, text editor. Okay, I'm still. I'm probably still going to have to mess around a bit with the icons here to get them to work. But this is an example of the uh, desktop app. This is basically Pluma. XED is what they've called it, 1.05, a small and lightweight text editor. This is a basic calculator, it's from the same series of apps. This is a bit more GTK3 looking, so they don't have the menu, the title bars, and all that kind of stuff. But it's a calculator, so I guess that's significantly le less required. The Mate desktop is incredibly customizable. You can set it up so you can have menus on the top, menus on the bottom, menus on the left, menus on the right. This was what uh, GNOME 2 used to be. 
Um, this is of course the update manager. You can change your software sources, all that kind of stuff. It's very easy. Like this is just the basic desktop, and, and new users um, can really just expect uh, a very Windows XP esque system, really. So, uh, what do I think of it? Um, I really like it. I really like Linux Mint in general. It seems like they've taken um, a very criticized Ubuntu base and certainly fixed a few of the, the, the minor bugs and certainly given it a bit of polish. Um, it's clear that if you st if you stuck to the the Mint X theme, or you you worked out a theme that was a bit more um, to your style, then you know that's that's the really the only stickler for me is is that their Mint Y theme is just it's a little bit um, inconsistent in certain places. It's a little bit um, I don't use the term broken because it doesn't break functionality, but it does look unideal in, in places. Uh, maybe they'll fix this for the final release. Maybe. Um, for the point one release, whatever it may be, but it, since it comes since it, since the Mint X theme is actually standard, and I've actually changed it to the Mint Y theme, um, then uh, then it will sort of be very polished and look quite easy, uh, you know, and quite easy to use and quite easy to get to grips with out of the box. Of course, the biggest criticism I've always had with Linux Mint is they've got two flagship distributions, two flagship distributions. One called Cinnamon, one called Mate, that most people are going to read as Mate, which there is a minor allusion to the difference that Mate is a bit more stable, whereas Cinnamon is a bit more sleek. That distinction for most people is going to, you know, it's not going to fly. And, and it would be nice if you just had one distribution that you handed out to everyone, and then maybe a few community distributions if there was the, the requirement for it on the side. I liked when I reviewed um, Elementary OS yesterday. That certainly did seem like it it filled Mint's old place of being user friendly and straightforward and simple and easy to use. And it seems like Elementary is actually stepping into Mint's shoes because this desktop is much more customizable than the Elementary one. And um, and this is really whereas it used to be a user friendly Linux distribution. It used to be Ubuntu, but with some user friendly improvements and some some added polish. But um, but it does seem that the that, that elementary has now taken that space uh, in a very interesting way um, because you know Mate. I mean, I would choose you know if I was Linux Mint, I would pick a desktop and I'd run with it. It I would personally I would choose Mate because it's wide you know it's more widely um, worked on than um, than Cinnamon. But you know Mate is a customizable desktop. It's you know it's it's not designed for it to be then. You know, deployed and then and then everyone to expect to fill within the workflow of the uh, desktop environment. Whereas Mate is designed to to mold around your 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 way of working. But all in all, it's a very straightforward, um, you know, and uh, distribution. It works pretty well. Performance has always been good. It installs on just about anything. But it really is a toss up between this and Ubuntu Mate. Um, oh, one more thing that I should let you uh, guys know: the software manager. The software manager is actually pretty good on this uh, distribution. Pretty good indeed. I let it load up, but this is a fine distribution, and I f feel like I'm singing Linux distributions' praises all the time now because most distributions seem to be at a pretty very good working standard uh, that I'd be happy to deploy on just about anyone's computer and expect them to be able to use without problem and Linux Mint of course is no exception but it's uh, it's it's among a growing number of distributions and whereas it's the most popular distribution on DistroWatch right now and probably the top five within the the world at least the world of the desktop um, it's 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 mints to lose at this point and um, what I see here with Linux Mint 18 is just the next stage of Linux Mint 17, which is, to, in my mind, what Linux Mint want to do. They don't want drastic and radical improvements, even, betwe even between big numbered releases. So a lot of people have said on this channel that Linux Mint is a very boring distribution. It experiments very little, and it seems to make an, a certain amount of effort to retain the status quo in terms of the desktop paradigm and user workflow. And if that's the kind of person, if you're the kind of person that thought that Windows XP was a great distribution and only need incremental improvements and under the hood improvements, this is the distribution for you. This is the Windows XP um, reincarnated and 
and uh, and and made to stay alive for a very long time. And um, so this is a very good um, software manager as well. I've always thought that this is quite good. It could do with a little more description. It could do with a little more um, explanation of of what all these you know files are. Well, it gives you a bit of a description. It gives you Skype, um, you know, de Deluge, Wireshark, Bluefish. So it's very easy, very easy to um, to navigate, and very easy to find what you need here. It's one of those uh, package managers that just it doesn't give you any bells and whistles. It doesn't give you any information you don't need. What's in the featured packages? So you got what Wine, GIMP, Gparted, VLC, Audacity, Skype. And what I do like about it as well is I think if you double click on it, that takes you to the, yeah, is that it gives you a, a star ranking and reviews. This is something I want to see in every distribution. So there you go. This is exactly what I want to see. I want to see I package managers with reviews at the bottom and star ratings, I think would be an excellent ad addition to any, because if I want to, if I want, if, it, if there's a new task that I want to do, a new job that I, I haven't needed to do before, and I wanted to use like the industry standard application, I just wanted to use whatever everyone else was using, whatever there was, was the most well supported, whatever like the most other people who were currently doing that job on that piece of software. And so I'd, I'd want to find the most popular and most widely used piece of software on the list. I might want to experiment later on. I might want to try different software out later on. But if I just want to get a job done and I just want to know the most popular piece of software to do said job, add a few comments to contextualize it and to describe you know a little more about it and a little bit about what's strong about it, what's weak about it. So again, this is one of the definitely one of the best software managers uh, in the game. Uh, for 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 um, you know, it doesn't hold your hand, which for new users might be an issue. But for a uh, for a user that just wants to click, 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 install, this is what we got. This is brilliant, perfect. So it's a fine distribution. If you want something to install onto a uh, you know a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle's computer that they just need up and running and working and 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 the basic amenities plus maybe even a few more because the software. Um, the software selection on this is one of the best in, in any of the desktop desktop uh, Linuxes. But it's in a damn competing marketplace of, uh, between, you know, elementary on the other side and a growing, you know, increase in user friendliness on Ubuntu on the other. Um, and not to mention, of course, we're seeing a lot of people turn to Debian now, people who want to get more to the bare bones of the system and, and want to get rid of a lot of the user friendly tools on top and get straight into pure Linux, which is quite interesting as well. Um, yeah, so a solid distribution. I feel that the theming breakages have over, like, have negatively uh, impacted this this little first impressions review. And I feel the reason for it is is that Linux Mint is designed to be a polished distribution, whereas other distributions might not be. Like, for example, with PC BSD, there was significantly less polish than even on this Linux Mint. But because PC BSD is a. Uh, it's not like the general BSD distributions. You know they're generally not super strong on the desktop, and PC BSD are breaking more frontiers. They're they're sort of doing it, almost they're doing a more difficult job, as it were. Um, so I, I'd be more. You know I'm I'd be I'm sort of more impressed with the talent at, at, at show there, but here where it's you know you're sort of. Uh, polishing off the edges and making what is effectively a very a good out of the box experience, and it is, it really is. Like the, there are really no big faults because the out of the box experience has the Mint X theme, and the the breakages don't exist there. And of course, this is a beta, so I might be going too hard on the the faults that could easily be rectified by a final release candidate because the quality control in Linux, in Linux Mint has always been pretty good. Anyway, a promising distribution. Uh, I feel that it rightfully deserves its place as one of the more popular distributions. Um, it needs to watch out for elementary, though. Whew. Um, but yeah, pretty good. Pretty standard. What you see is kind of what you get here. At this point now, I'm only rambling. And of course, as usual, when I've done uh, a first impressions review, this isn't an in-depth review. This isn't a review of me working on it for, for several weeks and, and, and reporting my findings. This is me having a look at what it's like the last time I've seen it and sort of checking in with it again. And uh, of course, I'm doing this on a virtual machine, so performance is uh, going to be a little bit stunted from what you might experience. But other than that, um, yeah. 
generally a pretty impressive distribution. Linux Mint always pull out a solid contender. Um, no real surprises here. It's just another solid distribution that brought out an, another release of, the, of, of said distribution. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.